Hello, Steve White, Trip Boy 89 for Steve Arts 89. Well, episode 6 of Lower Decks is upon us. Um, I managed to avoid it all day. I just managed to shut it out. Um, and then I saw someone's reaction to it on YouTube. I'm like, oh no, it's Thursday. I have to do Lower Decks. Eh? Um, now, this episode was called Terminal Provocations. And um, I actually didn't hate it. Um, I don't know if the show's getting better or if I'm just getting desensitized. Because some of the main issues with the show and the characters are still there. But um, I found the episode actually had a story. And you could follow it. And you could almost get invested in it on some level. Where I was actually following what was happening. So um, it wasn't really bad. But um, I'll get to that at the end. Basically, uh, we start off with the, um, the, the pre... Um, credits sequence is um, the part where they're all humming the warp core noise and um, Commander Dubro comes in and he actually pounces on Boilermer and you know basically he goes down of course so it's always Boilermer who's always suffering for everything. Um, then after the credits we get to um, the situation which is the C story but you know it's the main event of the episode where there is a race called the Drokmani. Um, they're scavengers. They have found 100-year-old Federation um, r rubbish that's basically just floating in space. Something that, I don't know, was a destroyed ship or just garbage or something. Um, and they've claimed it. And, you know, the Federation is saying, no, you can't have our stuff. And he's like, well, it's been over 100 years. Salvage laws, keeping it. Um, so they're trying to negotiate with him. And, of course, the captain is going on about how Starfleet she is and how we're not going to attack them because the Bajoran security guy is like, let me shoot them! Let me shoot the warp core! Um, and it's... it's okay. <laughs> Basically, the, um, the alien is being unreasonable and he, um, he just... he just... well, he wants to keep the stuff, of course, but he also wants to start a fight, so they're trying not to engage. So that's sort of the whole point of them trying not to engage. Um, Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And meanwhile, the crew downstairs, because because they're sort of saying how oh, we're fine. You know, we 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 he can't fight us. Basically, he doesn't really have weapons. We've got shields. We're fine. Everything. Um, and our crew, of course, is prepared for anything. So then they go cut to the crew basically having a party below decks. And that's when um, Mariner bumps into the cat lady because she's not really a cetacean or whatever they're called. Um, and she goes off because basically. Um, Mariner has reputation, and she basically tells her, and this was the best part of the show, um, he basic, she basically tells um, Mariner that basically she's a horrible crew member, um, that she's heard about her, she knows everything about her, and basically she should be on Starbase 80. She says she's a disgrace, and she should be on Star, Starbase 80. And, um, and then Mariner goes, you know, She's, she gets defensive when Starbase 80 is mentioned and that's some inside joke we never find out what it is. And she's like, I didn't realise cats ate nachos and she starts to get aggressive. And then this other guy butts in. Uh, what was his name? Fletcher. And he basically s fixes the situation by giving her a warm towel um, to clean the nachos out of her hair, fur, and a uh, new plate of nachos. So she leaves, but then he s basically says... Um, just to ignore her, she's basically just a cat in a coat, and that's pretty disrespectful. Um, and um, oh, she also says before that that you know at least some when he comes to help the she, the cat lady, basically says at least somebody respects command. So it's kind of known, I guess, all over the ship uh, what kind of officer Mariner is. So I like that someone had a go at her and tr and basically dressed her down. It was acknowledged that she actually is a bad officer and she doesn't respect um, the chain of command or the rules or anything. So I'm glad they're not just acting like this is normal in Starfleet or acceptable. Someone is actually saying, you suck. Um, and I had to pause. I was like, oh yes. I had to like pause the video and get like, just let the waves of joy pass over me for, for, a, f for a few seconds and then go, go back into the episode again. Um, but then they sort of diffused it by calling her a cat in a coat sort of thing. Um, and uh, Fletcher also is says that, because they're sort of establishing that yes, Starfleet officers are supposed to be responsible and they are 
supposed to be good, and like he says that they have a baseline of goodness, like all Starfleet officers. Um, we find out that uh, Tindy is afraid of spacewalking, and um, basically they go onto the holodeck so that um, um, Rut Rut Rutledge can basically give her spacewalking lessons. I don't know. He's just trying to get time alone for, you know. Um, yeah. um, and he invents this... It kind of reminds me of that stupid paperclip Windows had. Um, he invents, like, a badge, a Delta badge, which is sort of like this little help guide, and um, he calls it Badgy, and he's a virtual tutor. So... Everyone basically wants to go to this event, which is um, the choo-choo dance. I don't know what it is. We don't see what it is. We just see them watching it and getting all excited. Um, and this guy Fletcher talks them into leaving him there alone to deal with um, calibrating some element of the warp core or something, or the warp shield or something. Um, and they go. They come back, and he's lying unconscious on the ground, and he claims that he was shot by someone. So they think it's the... Um, um, what is the other... the Delta Shift. They blame the Delta Shift because they're always competing. So they go and confront them and they realise, no, they were there with us, so it can't be them, which they should have realised before, but... Eventually it comes out that he basically, um, he starts blaming everyone and everything, and then it turns out that he, for some reason, thought he could plug, um, the device into his head and make himself smarter because that would make it easier because it was too hard doing the job. By himself, which he sort of blames on them, so he's just really um, unprofessional and blaming everyone for everything. And then they find the warp core. That's that's how they know, and he admits all this. And um, he's damaged it, um, not the warp core. Um, the <laughs> it's part of the shields, and it ends up um, taking part of his memory or consciousness or something, it basically becomes alive and turns into a monster basically and it starts sucking everything into it and trying to absorb things and it just gets bigger and bigger and they have to try and drag it um, away and because there's this whole ongoing issue where they don't use the chain of command, they don't tell what's happening, the whole idea that they're supposed to stick together and stick up for each other and they're hiding stuff, constantly hiding stuff from the rest of the crew and um, their, their superiors which is a horrible example. And we go back to the holodeck, um, and while all this is happening, um, of course, the the our power goes out, and there's a hol holodeck malfunction, of course, and Badgie turns evil, and he wants to kill them. So they're running away from him. They change the holodeck to a Bajoran, because um, originally they're in space. So they turn to a Bajoran market so they can dress up and try and hide, and Badgie's literally tearing people's heads off. And they run up some the steps to some temple when he gets tired, and Rutherford starts fighting him, and it starts calling him Dad, because when he was too slow um, to load a program to help them earlier, Rutherford kicked it and got angry with it. So then he was acting like some deranged child that was rejected by his father or something. He calls him father, and he calls it son, and they have a fight, and then he tries various methods to kill it, and it seems to be dying, and they have this sort of weird trying-to-be-dramatic scene where they're like, oh my god, I'm going to end my creation's life, la 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 And he just twists Badgie's head, I guess, and kills him. And then, of course, when all that's over, uh, the, electri the power comes back on, and Badgie pops up like normal, and they're like, oh even though he had stabbed him and everything, and it was quite a moderately horrific fight where, where Badgie has a piece of ice and he stabs him and he punches, uh, punches Rutherford a bunch of times, and for a cartoon it's fairly violent. Um, I know it's not made for kids, it's made for a young adult audience, or youngish, 18 to 20 or something. So that's that sort of the B story sort of over. Now the A story, they eventually tie Fletcher up because he keeps on trying to think of ways to blame other people for his mistake and for him screwing up and they actually acknowledge that this is not how Starfleet crew should act and um, they try to you know stop him basically. So on the bridge there's the one funny moment where they're trying to argue with this scavenger and saying we can talk this out and he just says 
f you and hangs up um, on the on the call and I don't know it just cracked me up not a big laugh but I actually thought that was funny just the way he delivered it um, eventually this the creature that they've basically made out of this um, part of the shields they blow it out an airlock and it goes over to the other ship and it attacks the other ship and destroys the other ship right after the captain has given up and has said the Bajoran guy can basically shoot the warp core. But before they can do that, because the weapons are down, um, because they've taken all these all these hits um, and not fought back, basically they go down to work out what happened, because of course they trace um, the, the, the um, airlock unauthorized opening and all that stuff, and the missing um, part of the shield, and they do what we hate. They allow him to fail up, they lie and say that he basically thought of doing that and he did that deliberately to, you know, beat the alien and he gets a promotion and then transferred to the Titan which is of course another, one of the billion member berries in there, especially they list all the holodeck um, programs they use in next gen uh, at one point, so there's lots and lots of um, member berries and of course he goes to the Titan and they're like, well, you know she, we just want to get rid of him. So Mariner justifies it by saying she wants to get rid of him. So then he gets fired, of course, immediately, and he's messaging them because he's trying to get them to help him and make excuses. So they do acknowledge how Starfleet officers should behave, and um, when Boilermer points out that, well, you always break the rules, she's like, well, I only break stupid rules that you know stop me from doing a better job. So there's like this rationale, and it's still arrogant, egotistical, wrong, but they are trying to distinguish between like her and just a regular bad officer and they do some job at that but um, basically Bollum is still and, and all the bad guys are white of course white, the white men are always the baddies, the villains, the, the, the babies, the man, children, whatever because this guy basically wets himself and um, what's his name? Fletcher he basically wets himself and blames everyone, takes no responsibility, he's just a horrible officer, a horrible person so all the tropes and things that have sort of been running through the series are still going, but they are establishing um, Mariner and um, Boilema as being more working together, and he's getting less the short end of the stick, but he's still the joke, basically. And she's still Mary Sue to some level. But um, I don't know, they're doing a little bit better job of fleshing out the characters. And like I said, the stories, you can actually engage in them. Um, they're not so much ABC stories, where it's sort of just, yeah, it's, it is working better. I, I think it is working better. Um, it is, uh, still not sure if this is as good as last, the last episode, or maybe that just seems so good because it was the first okay episode that wasn't really bad. So I'm just going to leave it there. Um, I didn't mind it. Um, I think the show is getting better. There might be some hope. Um, but they still, they just have these core issues where they're laughing at Starfleet and they have these officers that don't behave like they're supposed to and it's sort of been acknowledged but it's still, like, it's, it's still, it just doesn't work. So it's just, it's, yeah, it just doesn't work. But um, I'm going to go for free to share, like, comment, subscribe, let me know what you think, let me you know what you think of the episode. Um, if I'm wrong, you know, whatever, um, comments are fun. Thanks, bye.